I'm here with Tom Shawanek, the creator of Sports Fit Westlake, sports performance and fitness facility. Tom, you've been a trainer for 15 years, right? Correct. What are what made you decide to be a trainer? My mom, actually. Your mom, actually. <laughs> How'd that happen? I used to uh, run a tool business, fixing tools. No kidding. In my early 20s, yeah. It was miserable, rotten, out of shape, in a car all the time. I think it drove 80,000 miles a year or something like that. Oh my gosh. So it was about a 220 pound, 38 waist, just slob. And now Miserable. You hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of. I mean, I think I had my midlife at 27 years old. So I um, got back into the gym, got back on my dirt bike, got back on my boards. And then my mom noticed how much I was back into the gym and knew that it was a service industry. So it made sense to become a trainer right away. So doing the fitness and, and becoming a trainer, yeah. you create a facility that is a staple for Westlake. What, what mean? How'd you become it? How'd you do this? That's an honor to say I'm a staple in Westlake because hey. we got some good competition here that are some of my friends. But uh, being amongst them and working around them, um, I really do think that there's three of us that made a real big impact in this town. With me being the smaller of the three, but we were all together at one point, learned a lot together, and uh, just kind of moved in our own ways. And it's good to have competitors that are friends that uh, we communicate and talk to all the time and know this is a pretty big area that can suit all three of us so it's uh to be that part of that staple is a big honor though being in this town as well these guys are all the elite of the elites it's really neat to be around and be honored to be here uh, perhaps in a, another aspect is a lot of clients and athletes and you train professional athletes you know celebrities the array of everybody it's a passion for you but someone who doesn't have that drive that you have what kind of advice would you give them how would you get their first step in the door here Oh man, it's 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 a lifelong thing. I mean, it's it's like you know, learn until the day you die. It's the same thing with your fitness. Um, when you get to a certain point in life, you know, I think it's just a matter of you got to keep moving. You know, stay in motion to be in motion. So, uh, at some point, yeah, you're going to get to that part of training, and it's just there's different aspects of how you're going to train throughout your life. When you're young, it's probably youth and athletics. At a certain point in your life, in your midlife, that's probably about where I'm at. <laughs> just want to safely get down mountains without getting hurt like I am right now, but it's a lifelong thing. It's the fitness isn't a fad, you know. Uh, if, if I have someone that's just dealing with weight loss and it's like, you got to give me a year. I need at least a year because the body will go through so many changes in that time. From a trainer's perspective, uh, you just said that, you know, we have a year to transform somebody. Mm -hmm. No one understands how long and how hard it takes. It takes someone who, the average person from where they're at to the level of, a, of an athlete. How many times would you say that someone would need to be seeing a trainer to hit that goal in a year? You know, Depends on the they person. They gotta be doing something pretty much every day. Okay. So if they're, you know, we, we, we give them a lot to do on the outside, but the reality of a trainer is, is you only got one to 2% of their time throughout the week. So there's a lot of step backs that they can do in that 98% of that time, you know? So for them, it's it's all them. You know, I, 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 I break all the stereotypes right away. I tell them I don't have a magic wand for you. This is gonna take hard work, you know? If, it might take more hard work for others than it is for some, you know? But persistence and determination is the only way that they're gonna achieve that. You have a state-of-the-art facility. Would you show me some of the things that you use to make these athletes better and hopefully making me better in the process? Sure. Let's do it. Sure. One thing we have that's unique, um, we got when they first came out was Woodway developed a treadmill that is self-propelling. So uh, the Navy SEALs like to call this the potato chip, which I think is kind of funny because it's got a parabolic shape. Uh, it's kind of like a hamster in a wheel. Um, the more you run up onto the track, the faster the track's going to spin. Um, I traditionally hate treadmills. Okay. I think they are useless for sport. I think it only works good for a cardio system, but I think it helps people overdevelop their hips and their quads for the most part. There's no posterior strength training of the hamstrings and the glutes when it comes to people running on a treadmill because a foot strikes that belt and then the motor assists 
the foot underneath the hip. So there's no point in hamstring or glute firing, which is huge for sprinting, huge for running. So with our athletes beforehand, I'd just say, we actually gotta run. You know, I, I, I hated doing the over speed training on those treadmills. But when these came out, this was interesting because uh, it's a lot harder to drive that heavy belt to get that belt driven and moving. It's harder to drive that than it is to drive across solid ground. The other treadmill, the other woodway we have, same thing. It's uh, it's human powered. So, so what's but the difference, one? that belt is uh, you can put around your waist. And there's actually a sensor right here that will read how much power we're developing in that sprint. Oh, wow. All right, so we could relay a lot of information, store a lot of information from each athlete. But the difference with this versus this is this is once again not a motor. You're you're the motor, <clears throat> but I can set a brake or a load on the belt, representing some resistance. But you can also push it like a sled too. So. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have athletes go out and push it like a sled. So like you need the football players, more of the linemen, O linemen. We have them push heavy, heavy loads. This thing's like a cross between an elliptical and a climber. Um, I like that the foot abducts. There's a lot of glute strengthening on this. So anybody with more than knee issues, uh, we have them on here. We've done explosive training on it. I've, like Charlie over here, we'll get on it for some cardio time. A lot of glute. So it's good for our sprinters, it's good for our runners. One of the things that we use here is Kaiser. Um, been using Kaiser for years. It's been around forever in the PT world. Um, I mean, I just, somewhere at some point, they made a cross into the sports performance because it seems like a lot of D1 and professional teams have used the Kaiser equipment. Uh, it's run off just pneumatics, it pumps up there, oh, just wow. kind of wrapped it around that pole and in there to keep things uh, hidden as possible. But what I love about that is I can change the resistance on the fly. We can do a lot of isometric strength training too and see where, you're, uh, see where you can fail at those. Now mind you, let me explain to you. For those of you who don't know Tom, Tom is heavily involved with our special forces and our military programs. True patriot. I mean, you guys don't know that, but I do. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much for your time. Welcome, my pleasure. Thank you for having this place here at Westlake. It's beautiful. <laughs> You've done an amazing job. And thank you for watching another episode of Pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at that. It took me like 30 times last night. <laughs>